So I'm Pete Scarborough, I'm a Professor of Population Health and Senior Research Fellow at the Oxford Martin School. And we're talking today about a paper that was published in Nature Food called Vegans, Vegetarians and Meat Eaters Have Divergent Environmental Impacts. So what we tried to do in this paper was connect real data on the real diets of vegans and vegetarians and meat eaters with the environmental impact of their diets, looking at not just greenhouse gas emissions, but water use, land use and biodiversity impact as well. Um, and what we tried to do was look at the full range of their possible impacts, so comparing um, uh, diets of v vegans and vegetarians that had a high impact compared to those that had a low impact so we can get that full range of the environmental impact. So the main thing that's, that's new about this paper is the fact that we're looking across so many different environmental outcomes, that we're using a really comprehensive data source for the environmental impact uh, outcomes, and that because we've got that comprehensive data source, we can look at a range of possible environmental impact of those different diets. So the real main keen finding is across all of the environmental outcomes that we looked at, the lower the amount of meat that you consume, the smaller your dietary impact. And that it incorporates both high impact and low impact diets. So the, the, the uncertainty around the estimates um, it doesn't obscure that fact. Um, so what we found was if you're a vegan, for example, compared to a high meat eater, you had a very reduced impact, around one quarter of the environmental impact across most of the ranges. But if you're a low meat eater as well, so if you just reduce the amount of meat that you're consuming, you have a considerably lower impact. So across most of the indicators, just moving from a high meat diet to a low meat diet reduces your environmental impact by about a third. I think there's two main things that we want to emphasise in this paper. The first is that reducing your meat consumption in your diet can have a real considerable impact on the environmental impact of your diet. And across the entire of the population, if everyone is doing that at the same time, that can have real serious consequences for the environmental impact of the UK. The second point is that we looked clearly at whether um, whether particular damaging aspects of specific types of diets might might overrule the kind of the benefits of them. So for example, we looked at you know water impact of avocado use, for example. And, and those particular high impact assess, uh, uh, impacts of particular foods doesn't obscure this message, okay? It's, it's, you know, even if you've got a bad vegan diet, it's got much less of an environmental footprint than a good meat eating diet. There's no doubt that if everyone became a vegan, it would have a huge impact on the environmental impact of, of our diets in the UK. Um, the vegan diets, on average, were about only about a quarter of the environmental impact across the different indicators. But I don't think it's realistic or, or even achievable that, that everyone in the, the UK does become a vegan. Actually, if you look at it, you can still obtain really substantial savings in, in, our, in, in our environmental impact just by reducing the meat that we consume. So moving from a high meat diet down to a low meat diet, reducing the amount of meat in your diet, that can reduce your impact considerably. So this paper came out in July in 2023 and it got quite a lot of attention on social media and in the, the national media. Um, a lot of it focusing around the idea that maybe it's promoting a vegan diet, which indeed the data shows that vegan diets are the least impactful in terms of the environment. But I think the key message that comes out of this is that if we really want to make a difference, we just need to kind of reduce the amount of meat that we're consuming and that can make a, a, a big difference. Um, and it's something that we can all do individually. There might be a lot of reasons why uh, we can't make differences to the way that we transport ourselves around or the way that we heat our homes, etc. But our diet is something that's under our own control. So it's a real area that, that we can empower people to make a difference in their own environmental footprint. Yeah, so I think it's been known for a while about meat's um, relationship with greenhouse gas emissions and potentially with land use. But in our paper, we also looked at the relationship with water use and water pollution or eutrophication. Um, that's particularly looking at how rivers and lakes um, 
um, because of fertilizer runoff mainly, then have large algae blooms, which basically stop the oxygenation of the river and make it a bit of a dead area for the wildlife in those areas. Uh, what we found from looking at the data was that, again, if you're shifting towards a low meat diet, then you're considerably reducing your impact in terms of the water that you're using and also in terms of water pollution. My message for World Food Day is there's many, many different healthy, sustainable diets, okay? There's lots of different ways that you can put a diet together that is going to suit a population that is going to be healthy and sustainable. But overall, across the entire of the planet, those healthy, sustainable diets have to have a considerable reduction in meat consumption. Otherwise, we're just not going to be keeping within our planetary boundaries.